Hello and welcome to my last day of Vlogmas. Today is my January TBR. I'm really excited to be starting this new year. I have so many things I want to read and I feel like when I'm away from my family, I'm away from home. As sad as that might be, it is an opportunity for me to embrace my love of reading and at least take advantage of that isolation. Hopefully this video doesn't fail again. We start off the year with my very first video failing. That's, that's a good sign for where the year is going. But either way, I'm excited about what I'm gonna read, even if this video <laughs> is testing my patience. If you saw my stats and goals videos, let's see, uh, my stats, I come to the realization that I'm probably reading between 3,500 and 4,000 pages a month. That's probably about 10 books. So I have here 11 or 12 books. So I'm, I'm pushing my luck, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping, that as I'm in my routine of work, biking and you know just living life, mostly by myself, that means I'm reading more. As I travel more, I bike more, I listen to more audiobooks. First up though, is actually a book that I'm carrying over from last year, which is Orm Shadow, a book I did not finish in November, in December, well both actually, because it's a physical book that I have to pick up and read. And oh my God, despite having two weeks off, making these videos is exhausting. Not just being busy with making videos, but if I have time to sit down and read a book, I have time to go for a bike ride. So you have to realize that if I'm asking myself, do I want to sit down and read this book? Or do I want to go read a book while I bike and enjoy the scenery and get some activity done? Obviously that's what I go for. And it's just really hard to get outside of that mindset to convince myself that it's okay and worth sitting down and just enjoying a book. But it's, it's a barrier, I'm not gonna lie. It's just, it's a psychological thing that I, it's, I find it really hard to get, across, to get past. This book is not a bad book. I'm intrigued and God damn it, I'm gonna keep pushing it, putting it on this list until I find a time to sit down and just, just read it. Okay, next up is another book that I'm carrying over in a sense, and that is to say Indubious Battle by John Steinbeck. This is one of the stories from, from I guess John Steinbeck's full collection, which I, I own his work in the Library of America. I, he's one of the authors like Ray Badbury, Shirley Jackson, and James Baldwin, whose entire backlist is something I'm trying to get through. One, just because they're very prolific writers, but also so I can say I've read those Library of America books. And the reason I'm choosing this one, I don't know. I, it was between this, Shirley Jackson, and Ray Bradbury. I'm reading a lot of horror, and I'm kind of in the mood for a, a Steinbeck. Steinbeck happens, often has these sort of giant reflective novels that can be emotionally, I don't want to say exhausting, but like in a good way. It is exhausting, but in a good way. It's like emotionally overwhelming and emotionally wrought books set in the real world. And I like that. I, I'm in the mood for that. This is one that I think out of my on my TBR back in, Jan in, in August or September. And again, if you saw my stats video, you'll know that that was a bad month for me. So when it comes to classics and books like these, even though I'm interested in them, they're usually the most intimidating, so they're usually the first to get sort of pushed off to the wayside when it comes to having to trim down the, the TBR that I'm reading. But given that I'm in a new location, I'm away from my family, I'm isolated, I have my routine down, I'm pretty confident I can get through all these books, meaning I can have time for comfortable reads and also some more challenging reads like this classic, In Dubious Battle. I know I haven't described what it's about because I don't remember. I, all I know is the, the general feel of a John Steinbeck. Next up, Lost in a Moment and Found. John McGuire's newest book. Um, this is gonna come out and I'm gonna read it as soon as I fucking can. I am talked about it all week, last two weeks, how much I wanna read this book. So naturally it's on my TBR. Next up, let's talk about the arcs that I'm gonna try and be reading. The first one is one that is an academic press release, which is Shirley, Shirley Chisholm by Antasia C. Cured. And this is a, a biography of the Congresswoman Congresswoman uh, Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman to run for president. And I became aware of her existence during the amazing Hulu, do not docu-series, but historical drama, or whatever you call it, called Miss America, starring Clay Blanchett. Had an amazing cast. And it was it was basically about the story of the, of the Women's Rights Amendment, well, Equal Rights Amendment, rather, and how they were trying to get that passed in the 60s and 70s. It was a fascinating story, and it makes me want to understand that period better, including understanding the people. And so when I saw this on NetGalley, this, this biography about this congresswoman, I thought it would be a perfect opportunity to learn more about her and her role in the feminist movement, especially coming fresh off of reading anti a Woman, where actually she's talked about in that book briefly as one of the women fighting for equal rights and for feminism as, as a black woman. So I'm really intrigued to learn about her life. One thing I'll say is that because it's academic press, it's not on audio. Even though I am giving Orm Shadow sort of the designated <clears throat> sit down and read book of the month, I'm hoping that Shirley Chisholm's biography 
will be one that isn't too difficult to read via text-to-speech on my Kindle, which um, is something I do occasionally for books that aren't, aren't too dense. So I guess we'll have to play it by ear, <laughs> pun intended, on whether or not uh, this one will work out. But it's one that I'm really intrigued to read. It came actually out in December, another reason why I want to read it. The timing just means that I really should get to it. The next one, The Blizzard Party by Jake Livings, is one that's on Scribd, so it's on audio, but I got the e-arc. Like over a year ago now, and I, I was intrigued that it was this sort of 70s period drama set in the middle of a storm. I was intrigued by it, the premise. But then it came out, and the reviews started coming in, and it seemed a mediocre story. But I know, as, as I requested it, I really need to get to it. And I'm sort of finally getting to a smaller and smaller list of Nick Alley arcs that I haven't read yet. And so it's time for me to really sit down and read it. In addition to those two, when I was reviewing my Net Galley arcs to try to figure out what I should read this month, I ended up going in a rabbit hole and requesting more books, which I know I shouldn't have. If I get granted these books, I'll read them. If I don't, I may end up pushing them all. I mean, some of them I'll have to because they're not out yet, but I may end up pushing them all from reading something else. First up, though, is No, no Gods for Drowning by Haley Piper. Haley Piper is a horror writer, and I think fantasy as well, who is someone I've been following on Twitter, I'm intrigued by. I don't know a lot about her work other than that she writes like weird horror. I think I was exposed to her actually in probably at Ellen Datlow. That was probably where it was. Oftentimes when it comes to small horror writers, it's Ellen Datlow's anthologies that expose me to them. And so I've been wanting to read her, her general fiction for quite a while. And it, she's not someone I've heard much about, so I would love to find, see if I will resonate with her long fiction as much as I did her short fiction. And if so, bring some attention to her because I don't think I've heard anybody talk about her on BookTube. This is her newest work. It's being released on audio rather has been and I saw it on NetGalley. Of the three I'm about to talk to you about, including this one, this is the one that I may actually still read even if I don't get the ARC because it's actually already out on audio and so I could get my hands on it if I don't get the ARC. Next up is All Hallows by Christopher Golden. I don't think this is out until late January, early February. This is a, not historical fiction, sort of more of a period drama during the 80s where you have sort of a Stranger Things, it, Stephen King-esque story of the supernatural thing going on with these group of kids. And the premise was really what pulled me in. I talk about this in my anticipated reads video where I had my top 15 anticipated reads. And Christopher Golden is a horror writer that I've heard good things about that I haven't read yet. If I don't get the arc, I don't think I'm gonna read it. Even if it ended up coming out later in the month, I think I'm gonna postpone it. I still haven't read his first book. The other one that I found, I believe while browsing the horror and queer section of Neck Alley was Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alice and Rumfit. This title, first off, was intriguing. The cover was intriguing. As beautiful as the cover is, it was probably, probably, probably more of a turn off. And that's more because it gives me YA vibes. But as soon as I learned it wasn't YA, I, was, I decided, obviously, I'm, I'm, still in, I'm still interested. Nothing against YA, it's just. I'm more hesitant on the YA I'm going to pick up, and I've learned not to request YA books on NetGalley because I need to at least get get some some feedback from people that I trust before I pick YA up. But this is a I think a, a gender queer horror book that was quoted by the author of Manhunt, um, Gretchen something. I haven't read Manhunt, but I've heard enough about it to know that if, if those two are comparable, if those authors are comparable, it's probably a good reason to think I'm going to like this. And while you might say, why aren't you just reading Manhunt? That's a good question. It's because I got the urge to request this arc. And so now we're in a position where I have an obligation to read it if I get it requested. If I don't, it's still going to be on my TBR in the long term. Maybe not this month. But moving on from arcs, the next one I want to read is Didn't We Almost Have It All by Garrick Kennedy. And this is one I've already bought on Audible. This is um, one of those books that I heard about, I think, on, on NPR, and I would just got the urge to read it. It's a book about Whitney Houston and how we as a society have judged her as a, as a queer woman and as someone who died of a drug overdose. And I think it's about reclaiming her identity and sort of pushing back on the disrespect that she gets. And for whatever reason, this book just really appealed to me. Maybe it's partly because of my of my queer identity and, and how big a role Whitney Houston plays in the queer community. But I just really want to learn more about her. It seems like something that, while I haven't heard much about it, I think it would be, I think, a really compelling read if it's done well. So I'm very hopeful here, and it's one that I actually almost started this one. This was almost the first book I read of the year, but I ended up not picking it up in favor of Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. And this was more that, I'm starting a new year, so I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is a chance to, 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 to meet your series goal. Either continue a series or start a new one that you want to start. And so I did it. I started this one. I haven't gotten far enough to say much about it, but I, I am liking it so far. Um, this is, of course, this sort of space opera. Um, we have politics and planetary science, two things I love most in the world, uh, so I'm hopeful. But to jump back to Did We Almost Have It All, one of the reasons I wanted to pick that up was because I'm, I'm conscious moving forward this year 
about the number of nonfiction books that I'm reading. I want to make sure I'm reading at least two, if not more, a month to make sure I maintain that sort of 25 to 30% threshold that I feel like is a, is a bare minimum of the number of nonfiction I'd like to read. So I don't let myself sort of get too comfortable in the, in the fiction. And it's not that fiction is bad, to be clear, but I think there's a bias, even me as someone who tries to think about it all the time, against nonfiction, of it being more intense, more difficult. And so I think it's easy to let yourself get persuaded to pick something up that's, that's not nonfiction. And I want to resist that urge, that anti-bias I have. Which is also why I've added another nonfiction here, which is The Diary of Anne Frank. I'm not going to get into the, the rabbit hole of internet searches that got me through this book, but effectively I realized uh, International Holocaust Remembrance Day is, uh, is January 27th, and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to make it a yearly occurrence to where I read a book about the Holocaust and every year. And actually, there were other books I want to read. I have not going to list them here, but if some of those arcs that I mentioned don't get granted, I may end up expanding my Holocaust uh, readings because it's something that I'm, I'm realizing I'm actually very interested in expanding. Anne Frank is someone obviously we've all heard about, but she's not someone I've really considered as a, as, a, as a real person. I don't mean that in a disregarding way. It's one of those things where there are so many tragedies in the world that you set up barriers. You just don't think about it, so you don't have to, to deal with the horrible tragedies that go on. I guess just something happened to where I finally realized this is a real person who, who had to hide during the Holocaust and eventually got caught and inevitably died. Much like the Night trilogy by is it Eli, Eli Weasel. This is one that I think will be difficult but have a profound impact on my understanding of that experience, of that horrible experience, which is something that we really can't ignore is as big as the temptation is to ignore it. That's why moving forward, I'm going to try and make January a, a, an opportunity to, to pick something up and, and acknowledge it and to force myself to remember it. Finally, Unexpected Stories by Tavi Butler. This is one that isn't too long. It's just a few novellas, I think. It's the last collection ever released by Octavia Butler, and it was after she died. And this is for the Octavia Butler Slow Read, which, while well, the last book review discussion is going to be January 29th or so. So I, I want to make sure I don't miss that. It's going to be a fascinating discussion. I, and I believe we're going to have at least one more meetup uh, to discuss Octavia Butler after this. I hope so. Octavia Butler Slow Read has been such an amazing experience these last two years. Where we all read the books together, and then we get sort of a, into a Zoom Zoom meetup and discuss it. And if you haven't participated, well, I think this is a great opportunity to do that. This is a, a short collection of novellas, and if you wanted to join and to see what the experience was like, this is your chance to do that one last time. But that is everything. Those are all the books I plan on reading in January. I am really, really excited for this new year. As you can see, because I'm reading more, I'm trying to return to some of those old goals I had, old books that I, I got pushed to the wayside, and make sure I, I still read them, don't forget about them, but also make room for new ones. Like It feels so refreshing to have this new year, new opportunities, and I feel like I can just, you know, find new things and just pick them up wherever I want. And obviously I can. I'm, it just, it's just really exciting, is all I can say. I, new year, new opportunities, new adventures. Let me know what you're reading this year and what your plans are, I can say this year, this month, I mean. And hopefully we all have a great reading year. As always, hope you all stay safe and I'll see you all next time, okay? Goodbye. <laughs>